Hello folks, and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party, and let's try The Bug Butcher. It's by Awfully Nice Studios. You can pick it up for $7.99 for Windows, Steam Play, and Mac. It supports local co-op, Steam achievements, has full controller support, and leaderboards. Currently, it's in early access, uh, but full release will be January 19th, 2016, which is actually just a day and a half from now. Uh, also, I am... I will be playing a press copy of the game that was provided to me for free just so I can make this video to you guys. So my understanding this game is very much like Super Pang, uh, a game I never actually played. But uh, I, those of you who have, uh, I looked the video up and I can see the similarities for sure. So the modes we'll be showing today are Arcade Missions and Panic Single Player. Uh, the co-op I have not tried. And keep in mind the co-op is local co-op only. So first I want to show you the arcade. I actually beat the arcade mode. Uh, here you can buy upgrades, which uh, it's a pretty good idea you do that. I actually managed to get to the, like, the last three stages of the game without realizing that I could buy upgrades. I thought that unlocked at some other time for some reason. Uh, it also shows you what stars you've gotten to this point, which we'll go over that in a little bit. And there's various weapons and upgrades you can buy, which we're not going to go into that right now. Uh, there's three difficulties. Easy, which gives you eight times health. Uh, you can see you actually have a little bit of armor on as well. Medium, which is four times base health and then hard, which is only one times health, uh, which I think is actually just one health, I think. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and play so you guys can see what this game looks like, and then we'll go back and look at some of the more detailed stuff. Uh, let's start on the first area here, not the tutorial, but the first area. We'll start on like mission four here. Uh, it will show your best. Now this is a very much a score attack game uh, where I feel like you're not really supposed to just go through it once. Uh, the idea is to beat your best score uh, and you know try to get on the leaderboards, maybe beat your friends as well. So let's go ahead and say okay. Now here's my one of my number one, oh my god, complaints is that this game is very bad about uh, like the controls are all over the place. Uh, as far as them displaying them, we're going to back up because this is the very first mission. We don't want to start that easy. So let's go back out. But it shows it in Xbox controllers. I don't have an Xbox controller even hooked up right now. But then sometimes it shows the keyboard controls. Sometimes it doesn't. It's very hit or miss. Sometimes the controls are listed incorrectly. For example, it said uh, like the dodge button was control, which it is not. It is uh, the slash key. Uh, you can rebind keys though, by the way. All right, so let me see if it'll actually let me do this. Last time it wasn't being such a pain in the butt when I tried to switch to a different stage. It is doing it now. Nope, it's still not letting me do it. This is actually worse than it was before. You know what, let's just play the first level because it's being a huge pain in the ass. Uh, we'll skip through this. Basically the idea is that this space station thing is infested by these bizarre space bugs. And you are the bug butcher, basically the the uh, the pest, the uh, anti-pest guy. <laughs> And of course it would be boring if you just, you know, sprayed around the edges of the house and came back two weeks later hoping all the ants were gone. You know, you actually have a gun and you kill these bizarre looking creatures, which I guess are the space equivalents of bugs. So at the bottom right, you see something's flashing. Uh, that is my upgrade. It's very difficult to type or to talk and play this at the same time. Uh, you can see it's my upgrade. Uh, after you kill X number of enemies, you charge up an upgrade. Now the upgrade is random. It's one of three different things. Uh, obviously, this beginning levels are very start, very easy. Sorry, I couldn't start on a further level. Uh, it was that's bizarre. I haven't seen it do that before. It's acted funky, but again, this is again where the controls are wacky. It feels like they tried to develop it first with an Xbox controller and then went backwards and threw in the PC controls and it got all booked up. But uh, anyway, so if you look here, it shows you your score. Uh, you get, your score is based on, let's see, the time, your highest combo, and how many co coins you pick up. There might be other aspects as well. Uh, and you can, you, can, you can get one, two, or three stars depending on your score. We beat the score very easily, 1500, but believe me, even on medium, uh, that becomes much, much harder later on. You also get like a bonus thumbs up if you get a combo, that's the combo that's listed there. So if I get a 30 combo or better, I'd get the thumbs up. I don't know what the thumbs up is for. It's just something else to shoot for, I suppose. Uh, let's go ahead, let's go back out and see if it'll actually let me choose a different uh, sub stage this time. Because I can't click done, I can't click play. 
Spacebar? Nope. Spacebar kicks me right back to the first one. To the point that I can't even get out of it now. Escape? Nope. It just keeps going back to the first one for some bizarre reason. I'm trying different keys. I just upgraded to the press version. I think maybe they introduced this bug because I don't remember this happening before. Let's just go back if it will let me. There we go. Oh, wait, you know what? Let me see if I can do this. Aha! I, uh, I had to to uh, trick it into letting me play. So there's these intermittent... Basically, there's multiple levels. Uh, and you... Like, each stage, you play multiple sub-stages. Oh, shit. I don't know why I thought I would use the mouse there. But you have, like, multiple sub-stages in each area, so to speak. Uh, and in those areas, you tend to fight... Well, I was going to say you tend to fight the same particular enemies, but that's not really true. Uh, you tend to fight the same enemies on multiple stages. But there's a fairly decent variety. Uh, there's a lot of these guys, like the fatter guys, who when you kill them, they pop it, blow up into the smaller ones. There is a little bit of variation, though. As you saw, the orange one will actually shoot uh, bullets at you from the sides. Purple ones just bounce around a lot. Uh, and then, like I say, obviously, burn... or. Uh, break down into smaller ones. I'm trying to keep my combo up if at all possible. Now what I was going to show you before is the power up. Now your power up is built by killing enemies. So I just used it with spacebar and it makes you invulnerable and you shoot faster while it's active. And you can also see how long it's going to last in the bottom right. So you can see again that I'm building that back up. I'm going to wait for him to drop. Finish him off. And you can see, again, it's built back up after I've killed, you know, X number of enemies. And it doesn't seem to matter how big the enemy is. So killing these little guys uh, is just as advantageous to building up your special meter as killing the big guy. So if you're desperate, you're low on health, things are looking bad, try to kill the smaller enemies to build up your meter and then use it. So we're just going to use this again. We take no damage while it's active. And there we go. So again, keep in mind, these earlier stages are pretty easy. And you can already see I've only got one star on that, because I, partially just because I got hit once. So let's move on, just so you can see a different type of stage. It's not all the same thing. This is probably my least favorite area, uh, because of these walls that keep coming up. They're very, very annoying. Um, one, they just pop up randomly. Uh, they don't, you can't control, you control them a little bit, but they, they also can be completely random. So, for example, you see those, like, the green stuff at the bottom, those uh, plates on the floor? If I stand on those, the, the, the walls will either disappear or reappear. However, again, as mentioned, they will also disappear and reappear just on their own. So let's go ahead and use our special. This time was the rockets. Yeah, I don't think there's any... You don't have any control over your special attack insofar as what it is. It, again, I'm pretty sure it's random. I don't think it's stage-based or anything like that. I think it's just totally random. Because this time, we'll probably get something other than the rockets. And like I said, there's like four different uh, different abilities. And I realize I'm also doing some other stuff that's going on that I haven't really explained yet. There's just so much that I will explain it as we go. Let's go ahead and shoot off the rockets. Unfortunately, they hit the wall. Most barriers, your special attacks will go through. But apparently, these walls are different. So, I got to cheat with that time. Eh, got two and we didn't make the 50 hit combo. But okay, so we talked about the special attacks. Let's look at the other UI elements here on the screen. The little four blue or blue-ish bars underneath my character, that's my damage or that's how much health I have. As you can see when I got hit, I lost one. Uh, below that is just like your overall score, I think, for the stage. I don't really pay attention to it because I'm probably I'm busy trying not to die. So that shows you your overall score. So if you're doing a score attack type thing, if your score is already too low and you're like halfway through, you know you can just restart without wasting your time if you're trying to get like you know beat your old high score. Now obviously the multiplier is just to the right of the score, and you lose your multiplier either by getting hits or taking too long to get another uh, do damage again. Uh, on the left hand, well actually we'll skip the left hand side. On the right hand side we talked about that, that's our special meter. The top left is your timer. You are timed. Uh, obviously I think you do get a better score for beating the score, the stages faster. 
but you also, if you run out of time, you lose, which kind of sucks ass. Uh, it's happened to me a few times. Uh, it doesn't come into play often, but when it does, it's it's uh, a little bit irritating. Now, these little spiders are special enemies. They grab the scientist guys, and if you let them hold on to the science, scientist guys too long, they will actually kill them. Uh, it's usually not too bad, though. Very rarely have I lost because the spiders killed the scientist. You get a long time to kill them. First of all, they have to walk over the scientist in order to grab them, and then even after they've grabbed them, it takes them a while to hold them long enough to, to suck them up. But uh, now let's talk about some of the other upgrades that you get, and I'm sure you've seen me picking them up as we go along here. So there's two other types of upgrades you get. Uh, one are like these little gel looking things that drop to the ground. They're temporary items that increase your damage or your fire rate, things like that. I'm waiting for one to drop so I can show you. Uh, you also see that there's coins are dropping. Uh, you want to grab the coins. They do disappear after a while. Uh, and they are useful for um, upgrading. So that's green gel. We just grabbed that. And you can see at the, at the right there it says bullet storm. We shoot faster while we have that. And you can also see that as we shoot, we lose some of it. So it is, you only keep it for X amount of time. Well, not even time's not even a factor. It's based on, uh, again, how often you're shooting it. So now we're out of it. Also, you can see that there were some boxes that were dropping onto the ground. Those are our other type of upgrade, the weapon upgrade. And right now, this weapon, if you look at the bottom left, it's kind of got a science-y type icon. You can see whenever we shoot, that runs out. Same principle here. It's not based on time, it's based on how long you shoot it. So here's another weapon upgrade that we found in a box. This is my favorite one by a pretty substantial margin. It's pretty badass. Oh, here's one of our other specials. The freeze, and I almost got myself killed. One thing that does kind of suck about the freeze is that if you freeze enemies on the ground, you can't kill them. Uh, here's another weapon upgrade we just got. All these upgrades that drop on the ground, by the way, are time limited, so you want to, to get them as quickly as possible. Also, the upgrades do stack. So if you get the missiles plus the damage boost, or, you know, missiles plus fire rate, you shoot much, much faster, which obviously is pretty nice. Let's go ahead and shoot that off and knock those guys out. So again, these stages are fairly easy just to beat on this difficulty, but getting a high score is is really where you're probably gonna spend your time if you're into that type of thing. So let's play one or two more areas. I think I've covered the basics. Uh, if you haven't figured it out, you also can't shoot from side to side. You can only shoot straight up. As far as controls, I'm only using the keyboard here. I'm using the shift key to fire. I'm using A and D to move back and forth. Spacebar uses my uh, my special ability. And control will do the dash you see in there. And you can see how much dash you have left, the little uh, like half circle that appears underneath them. I'm going to use my my special here. And this actually worked out really well because I had like a damage boost missiles and the serum all going at the same time another thing you might have noticed is that some enemies when you shoot them they'll kind of bounce up let's go ahead and use our thing again here they'll like bounce up off of your your bullets so if you shoot them right before they hit you you can just kind of bounce them off your head other enemies will not do that like uh, tougher enemies will not bounce we'll easily kill these spiders Again, you can see they're not any real serious threat. The spiders. Like I said, I think I've only lost scientists like three times, maybe. Uh, there's another weapon upgrade, machine gun, which is probably my least favorite, which is not to say it's bad. But the reason I like the other things like the beam are because they're like universally good. Like there's nothing the beam weapon isn't good against. Oh. Let's go ahead and grab here. This one is another machine gun. You can always tell what kind of gun it is by the icon. And again, don't be deceived by how quickly I'm beating these levels here because I've, I've got my upgrades done. Well, I've got some of my upgrades done. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've done these uh, a few times and kind of learned how all of this works. So we'll do one more. I said we were going to stop. But, again, I think you've kind of got an idea how the basic... Uh, basic 
game works. Here, another machine gun. And sometimes you want to use your abilities, your special stuff, like immediately. But sometimes you want to wait, especially if you're struggling with one stage. Sometimes you want to wait and save your special for when things get nasty. I keep getting a machine gun. I keep running into these guys too. Mostly because I'm trying to hurry up and get through this one. Turn off that. So again, the pink enemy, well, you can't really see because I'm doing so much damage. But those enemies will bounce off of you. Let's see, it died there. One other nice thing is you restart the level fairly quickly. There aren't any checkpoints within a level though. So it can be a little bit painful later on when there's more phases. But let's go ahead and we're just not going to bother even using our frost on these guys. You can be pretty patient with these and just let them get to a position that you can kill them without getting yourself killed. Keeping in mind you do have a time limit, but again, I didn't really run into time limit problems until significantly further in the game. I got right underneath him like an idiot. Brilliant. But I was trying to show you you can bounce these little pink guys. They bounce off your shots. So again, some guys will not do that. They will completely ignore it. Oh, oh well, he got away. I wasn't paying attention, I was too busy babbling. Uh, I should have just froze the screen because I had the ice. We'll do this stage one more time. Again, you get the idea of how this mode works. It was mostly pretty easy until the very end. Again, keeping in mind that I am playing on medium difficulty. I missed that weapon over there to the left. Uh, but it was pretty easy up until the end. It started to get really hard, uh, especially because I didn't have my upgrades like I was supposed to. Which, yeah, uh, definitely, if you want an extra challenge, don't bother upgrading anything. Uh, upgrading your weapons and stuff helps a lot. We're going to talk about the upgrades, and we're also going to look at the other mode. Uh, the other mode I actually kind of like more than this. It's Though I could see it being a thing where you kind of alternate between the two different modes. But again, we'll, we'll kind of talk about that later. You can also get health, as you, again, probably have noticed. So if you're taking damage because you're bad like I am, then... You can remedy that with some well-timed health drops. It is fun to try, you know, try to get your your combo multiplier up. The game is fairly good at dropping enemies enough so that you don't lose a combat multiplier or a combo multiplier just because you're waiting for an enemy to drop. However, there's times later on, and probably my second least favorite stage. Uh, in fact, now that I've played this stage again. The other stage is my least favorite. There's one where there's ho like uh, horizontal uh, walkways, basically, that appear and disappear. You can shoot them and destroy them, but they are very, very annoying, to say the least. Because enemies will constantly get on the other side of them so that they're on the opposite side from you. And this will screw your combat multiplier up all the time because then you have to shoot through the, the beam or shoot through the walkway. And often by the time you shot through the walkway, they're on to the next one. So you kind of have to plan ahead and shoot the walkways uh, or you lose a combo multiplier because you go to kill an enemy and the walkway pops up just at a bad time. Definitely my least favorite. Uh, I found that mechanic to be pretty, pretty annoying to be honest. Um, but but uh, there's a decent amount of stages here. You can see there's 30 stages total each uh, like subsection has the six state Well, yeah six stages uh, the last one being again level 30. I went through the entire campaign again I, you know on medium difficulty Maybe two and a half three hours something like that so keep that in mind if you're the type to play through once but another thing to keep in mind is note that on four and five I have very, very few stars. On this one, I have one star in all of Steelworks. And then in all of the Observatory, I have uh, two, three, four, four stars total, which funny enough, I got two stars on the last, very last stage. So if if you are care, if you care about score tax, getting the three star ratings on various stages, that's where I think your gameplay is going to come in, not just beating the game, because you'll be able to do that fairly quickly. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, let's lastly, before we leave this section, the arcade mode, let's look at some of the upgrades quickly. You can upgrade your guns. The machine gun is just your basic gun. You can also upgrade the various weapon upgrades that you pick up, like the laser gun, uh, the rockets, all that. You can use your money that you've been getting to upgrade those weapons. You can also use money to upgrade your 
well, uh, like your your special abilities, like the speed uh, injection, uh, the freeze grenade, which freezes everything on the screen for like 3K. We can increase how long it lasts. Uh, the homing missiles, which just blow up everything on the screen. Again, you can increase how many rockets get shot so it does more damage uh, and kills more enemies. In the last section, these are the expensive upgrades. These are basically suit upgrades. This one increases your running speed for 5,000. And this one gives you a bubble. I presume, that basically this bubble protects you from damage one time, and it also allows you to get hit without it interrupting your combo. I don't know if this regenerates over time or if it's just a one time per stage thing. I would think it's probably like a one time, one time thing per stage. If not, uh, if it regenerates during the stage, then that would be very, very impressive. Uh, also, there's the last upgrade, the combo boost increases the combo meter from four to six seconds. In other words, you've got six seconds to kill something else instead of four, which I think that would be very useful, if not near required, if you're going for the highest score that you can. And then from here, it's just a summary of all your upgrades. And as you can see, you do keep your upgrades from mode to mode. So you don't have to upgrade on easy and then do the same thing in medium or whatever. Uh, so that's, that is pretty nice. And it also tells you your overall how many stars you've gotten. So let's go back home and let's switch to panic single player. And this, you choose the different maps. Um, Let's choose Robotics Bay, because that's my least favorite. There's no easy here, there's just medium and hard. Uh, and before we get started, just to show you like how this works, uh, you can see this is where I was playing it earlier, my best time, how long I was able to live, how many waves of enemies I was able to last through. World rank number one, uh, you can ignore that because the game's not out. And I also am using a press version, so I think that's throwing that off a little bit, um, because I'm obviously not that good at this. So let's go ahead and, and do the robotics bay. As far as controls, it actually does, like it does work. It might seem weird the way I described it earlier. Oh, come on. Is that the hit okay? Yeah, there's definitely some things different with the press version, because before I was just able to hit, there we go. I was just able to hit like enter, I think. Now here are those platforms I talked about where you can destroy them, but they, uh, they keep coming back. They're very, very annoying. So the things different here is basically it's see how long you can survive. Uh, you need to worry about health, obviously, but also for your time. At the, the time, this time the time is at the bottom. And you can also see that I'm picking up health, or not health, but I'm picking up time. Time extenders, which, as you might imagine, adds time to our clock. This way we can, you know, keep going and keep going. The, I haven't ever lost my clock yet, but I have, uh, I, I almost thought, I, well, I always just run out of health. I end up getting killed. However, you might notice also that our special meter is not filling up like it normally would. We also haven't got any special weapons. Now, you have to buy all of that. Well... You have to buy those abilities. Uh, you don't have to buy each individual one. And I'm trying to get more money so you can see how that works. Oh, man, I hate these. Come on. Yeah, I was just was like, okay, I need to at least be able to take the hit there because he was going to die at that point. So after you've killed X number of enemies, you get a whole bunch of coins. Uh, we don't want to spend money yet. I want to get 100. Now, you can upgrade whenever you want. You don't have to do it between waves. I don't know what that thing is that pops up. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Uh, of course, right as I was about to show you how this works. Uh, and this is, an, again, kind of annoying because it's got X3 tries. Like, well, how about, like, spacebar or something? Since I'm on a keyboard and I don't even have a controller plugged in. As far as I can tell, I think the waves are always the same based on the stage that you're in. The only reason the stage matters, uh, well, one, is the uh, the pattern for enemies will be different based on the stage. Also, any kind of stage, stage, uh, I don't want to say gimmicks, uh, stage hazards, we shall say. Uh, like these have the, these floating platforms, the other one had the walls that come up. There are a few others in other stages as well, though they're pretty similar. It's basically walls that block you off and or the enemies off. So I want to get to the point where we've got 100 coins, so I can at least show you how the upgrade system works. Well, once we are 
in this mode. Like I said, I um, I overall like this mode more. It might be because I played it less, so I you know wore on me less than the other modes did because I did find myself getting honestly pretty bored with the uh, the other mode just because if you keep dying you have to keep playing the same stuff over and over and over again and it does kind of wear out its welcome playing the exact same stage with the exact same spawns over and over again but again if you are into that uh, that type of thing where you play over and over again to get the best score I don't think you're gonna really have a problem with that. All right, so let's show how the upgrades work. Basically, you have to unlock the abilities that we had in the arcade mode, in this mode. So for example, in order to get power-ups, we have to buy it first. You can see these are each 100 except for the bubble, which isn't really that good and doesn't always work, actually. I've had enemies get in the bubble and still damage me. Uh, it's supposed to protect you. But uh, anyway, let's go ahead and pick Freeze to unlock that. Now you might want to grab everything in a line first because you'll see here if you have all the power-ups it says power-up will charge faster if all power-ups are purchased which is really nice. Uh, same deal here if you grab all of the weapon upgrades for the bonus the boxes spawn more frequently uh, if you have all of them uh, which is why I tend to like to to get that. But uh, let's play this a little bit longer. I think you get, again, pretty much idea how this mode works as well. But let's see how long I can live. Apparently not very long. I swear to God, I actually did better before. Ah, I think, I'm guessing that's like their treasure goblin, right? Where if we kill it, we'll probably get a, like a bunch of coins. That's, that's as close as I've gotten to that thing to dead, because normally I, I completely miss it until it's already falling. We're down to two health. Let's go ahead and use our special ability freeze here. We don't have enough money to get any upgrades. Yeah, this mode you definitely want to make sure you're buying stuff as soon as you can. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll get the we're going to get the the upgrade as well because we're probably not going to unless we get some lucky health here soon. We are probably not going to make it for too much longer. Also, it's got to be said, the game, this uh, music in this game is quite good. I like it. All right. You also do not have to just keep spamming the attack key. You just, I just hold shift down and you just auto shoot as fast as you can. So no having to worry about breaking your keyboard. Well, maybe not for that reason. But so we only made it to wave three that time. Definitely far worse than I've done previously. But again, a world rank 30, obviously that tells you everything you need to know is that I'm amazing at this game. But uh, yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting game. The last thing I want to go over is the options. Uh, there's not many. Uh, basically, you can remap the controls as we talked about before. So if you prefer to use a different controller layout, you can on the keyboard at least. I'm not sure about if you've got a controller plugged in. I would imagine you are, but I, again, I'm not 100% on that. Uh, you can, these are also, you can, bah, let me, let's say that again. These are the controls for the local multiplayer, which again, you can change if you want to. As far as other options, there's no video options at all that I've been able to find. Uh, music, you can either turn music off or on, sound effects on or off, and you can control overall volume. You cannot control the music and sound effects audio separately, which is a pet peeve of mine. I really hate when I can't lower the music down. In this game, it's not a big deal because I really like the music. Excuse me, and it goes well with the game. So again, it's not as big of an issue, but still, please put that option in uh, in the future if, if you can. But overall, this was a fun game. I th especially for the price, seven dollars and ninety nine cents, eight dollars. I think eight dollars is pretty good for this. If you're the type who is going to just play through this once, maybe just pick it up every now and then and play for five to ten minutes. Eh, I mean, it's all right. I don't really know if I could suggest picking it up because I feel like you're not going to get a lot of time out of it. Uh, you know. You might say, oh, well, it's $8. Like, why would you not? I mean, there's a ton of games that are very cheap these days, right? So it's harder for me to suggest for somebody who doesn't really care about star ratings, doesn't care about leaderboard, doesn't care about competing with friends uh, for better time, better scores, all that stuff. Uh, there's not 
there's not a lot of replayability if you don't care about that stuff. However, if you do care about that, if you do want to get all the stars on every level and then play on higher difficulties and compete on the leaderboards and all of this stuff, if that's your your thing, then I'd absolutely think you'll get your eight dollars out of this. Keeping in mind, you know, the the mechanics themselves are fairly limited. You can only shoot straight up and you know, you are limited to what items drop. Like you can't, you know, you can't uh, control what's what's dropping, right? You just kind of have to to go with it. So, you know, to that end, there's again, there's not much control over over it. But like I say, it's it's pretty fast paced. It's got kind of a you know a, a constant constant stream of something like picking up weapon upgrades, uh, using your special abilities. All of that, like, giving you something to do. Looking out for those those weapon crates so I can use my special weapons. Trying to time it so that, oh, okay, you know, I'm going to try to, you know, attack these enemies just enough to keep my combat multiplayer going because there's a wall separating us right now. Things like that. There is... It does feel good in that aspect. And, of course, also trying to keep your combat multiplier up without getting hit at all is always fun in itself. Oh, I love when that happens, too. Like when you hit these little pink guys, the rockets, and they just kind of bounce off the rockets to the point that all the littler ones blow up. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Picking up all the upgrades. All right. Do we at least get... To, oh, we did get three stars there. Did we get a 60-point combo? Ah, no. See? Ah, if you're if you're that type, you'd play it again to get that 60, 60 multiplier. And again, on harder difficulties as well. But, yeah, so long story short, if you play it through one time, mm, $8, I feel like you may not feel like you got all, all of your money's worth, depending on how you value that $8. If you're the type to play it over and over again for higher score, you absolutely will, in my opinion. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to leave comments in the comment section below. Follow me on Twitter. And if you'd like to see more coverage of games like this that you may not have heard of, make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.